Some market news for you now. Sterling rose and most Asian stocks crept higher in cautious trade today, but many investors sought shelter in safe haven assets such as the yen and government debt as they brace for Britain's vote on its fate in the European Union. Japan's Nikkei share average gained 1%. Hong Kong shares rose for their fifth straight day. The Hang Seng index rose 0.4%, but mainland China stocks fell in thin volumes as most investors kept to the sidelines. The Shanghai Composite Index also lost half a percent. Over in the U.S., uh, stocks dipped in low trading volume yesterday, with traders focusing on Britain's referendum. Stocks rose earlier after data showed U.S. home resales rose in May to a more than nine-year high, adding to retail sales and international trade data that painted an upbeat picture of the economy in the second quarter. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell by 0.2 percent, the S&P 500 lost 0.1 percent, and the Nasdaq Composite Index dropped by 0.2 percent. While the local stock exchange and European bourses are currently in positive territory, this is largely being influenced by markets expecting that the UK uh, will vote in favour of remaining within the EU. But in reality, it does look like the vote remains too close to call. In a last-ditch attempt to persuade voters, Leave campaigners argue that Britain will be better off on its own and better able to control its borders, while those in the Remain camp argue that the economic stakes are simply too high to get out. Let's take a look at the indicators. I'm joined by Thomas Kukulu from Sunstrike Capital uh, to discuss some of the market developments. Thank you for joining us, sir. It's a pleasure. Um, it seems as though the market is pricing in uh, the idea that uh, the UK will decide to remain. But obviously, because we don't know what the outcome of the vote is, uh, just paint us a couple of scenarios. One, if they do decide to remain, uh, what will happen to shares, commodities, uh, bonds, and so on? And obviously, if the converse were to happen, what the markets don't want to happen, if there is a Brexit vote, what the implications would be? Uh, I think the, the vote of staying in, uh, in Euro remaining there, uh, the market has already priced it. I think the market is comfortable with that particular scenario. The scenario that is more problematic is the one that uh, will result in them exiting Euro because that brings a lot of uncertainty. And we know that financial markets, one thing that they don't like is uncertainty. And uh, we'll see you know, the likes of uh, different currencies depreci depreciating. And if you look at uh, the emerging markets themselves, emerging markets really, they don't enjoy uh, a, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of risk. And in particular, South Africa, we might see the rent really you know, you know, dropping a bit. And that means that uh, you know, we might be bringing imports at higher prices as well. And uh, from export point of view, because Britain is also our key partner in terms of exports. And then if you've got imports that you're bringing at a high price, but then your exports are not coming through because obviously the growth uh, in the UK will be problematic, that on its own brings a lot of problems for economic growth as a, as a country. Now, the central banks have indicated, the, the large central banks, mm -hmm. your US Fed, your ECB and so on, yeah. they've said that in the event of a Brexit and mm -hmm. in the event that financial markets do go into a tiz, so yeah. to speak, um, they will have armory available to deal with that. What do you think that they could possibly do? Uh, I think uh, what they will possibly do, for example, is that one of the options is really to look at the interest rate, uh, possible interest rate hiking, uh, so that you, as people move away from uh, other uh, products like equities, can then have uh, an opportunity to invest in the likes of bonds mm -hmm. as well. And also we see that uh, the price of gold as well has really uh, been expecting more of uh, an exit of some sort because it has been growing nicely. But again, I think from a South African point of view as well is that uh, interest rates would be much more better to keep the inflation as a result of a weaker of, of a weaker end now your particular specialism yeah. is in the area of exchange traded funds just yes. to explain to our audience if you will what uh, those are and what the benefits are thereof 
Uh, in the markets, you normally have your active uh, asset managers who tend to pick shares and uh, put together portfolios. And then you've got our space, which is uh, passive investment. What we do, we don't pick individual shares. Uh, we simply track the market. Uh, we believe that, uh, that there's a role for all different types of investing. And passive investment assists in keeping the cost very low because we don't spend a lot of time in research. We just track the market. And our view in this current uh, current times is that you know investors uh, need to take a long term view mm -hmm. and uh, you know uh, exchange traded funds are more likely to offer that particular benefit but you know when mm. we're in such volatile situations such as these mm. um, presumably one would feel more comfortable if you know that you've got an active investor yes. sort of saying oh my <coughs> goodness there's this risk over there let me shift these funds mm. over there whereas mm. in an ETF type of scenario mm. it's like go with you know go with the flow Interesting that you mentioned that, but remember there is still a risk that uh, you know an active asset manager cannot uh, might not be able to pick up the right stocks because mm -hmm. the environment as it is is quite complex, is quite volatile, so there are no certainties in it as well. And we have we take a view that I mean if uh, you know investors are tracking the market and they take a long term view at this stage, they are likely to benefit in the long run out of these uh, ETFs. All right. Um, after tomorrow, it will obviously be clear what the outcome is in terms yes. of Brexit. Mm -hmm. um, so, but regardless of whether they decide to stay or go, mm. there was volatility even before. Yes. So therefore, what is your advice to people who have funds or who want to invest about the best way to go about investing in these volatile times? Uh, one of the things that really they can do, because beyond this uh, referendum, we are still heading into a global you know, economic outlook that is not that positive. And I think, I mean, for me, I'll take uh, some money and put it in the bank and uh, put it in cash. Uh, that is much more safer until the environment becomes much more clear in terms of uh, how we can go about uh, investing moving forward. But then we don't get any return on cash. Um, you, you rather get little return than uh, get negative uh, 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 returns on your portfolio. <laughs> so I'm saying you, uh, if, if the environment is so complicated as well and it's so uncertain, rather take a safe bet and really stick into the safe assets, for example, your bonds, uh, and uh, really put a lot of uh, money into, into cash. Thanks for your insights. That was uh, Thomas Kukulo. He's uh, from Sunstrike Capital. Our